Hey everybody, Pack Opening Addict. So <clears throat> in this particular video, so these are actually, both of these boxes belong to my patron, Damien. So I've been kicking around different ways to do things and in the future and so on and so forth. And started with Steven where he got two boxes and I decided to do it in two separate videos. Um, they didn't really, you know, give me a determined way to do it. Um, Damien, I'm going to try to do both of his in one video. And honestly, I'm going to kind of just look at it as a whole and see which way I prefer to do it. So, Damien, we're going to open both, both your boxes in one video. So let's pop one. Then we'll pop the second one. And then we're going to have all of the board hopefully full by the end of it. And uh, we will go from there. Okay. Get the first pack open. Get the packs out. Perfect. You know, same story every time. Get the box out of the way. And let's get to ripping. Good luck, Damien. Here we go. Hope you find some gabagools. <laughs> right off the bat, we've got a foil mythic. Of course, these are Japanese printed, so it's that matte foiling. And that is a Dragon Lord Slumgar. All right. All right. Right off the bat, Foil Mythic. And we've got Hero Games and a Oracle of Moldiah. There we go. In the borderless treatment. And then a Gifts Ungiven. Well, hell of a first pack. Van Rett. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah, I know, everybody. I'm not going through all the, the commons for... Uh, for the borderless commons, but I do that in the collector boxes, so, you know, <clears throat> for the sake of time, we got Jeromoka's Command, and Verena Lich Queen, Bant Charm, Mullet Drifter, and the Aqueduct. So we're going to have 48 wonderful packs in this video, so hold on tight. Rampant Growth, very nice. The Hyena Umbra and Kozilek, the Butcher of Freaking Truth. That's your first uh, regular Mythic. Hey, Darksteel Plate. You know what card? And again, this is just all a matter of uh, sample size. You know what card I've pretty much like never pulled? Darksteel Freaking Plate. Okay. You know what? I don't even know if the price is holding on on that one, but either way, I'm putting it over there. Okay. And we got Darkness, Blah, blah and Young Pyro Mancer. Sign of Darkness is kind of a neat reprint, but you know, went into it where people were like, that card's actually worth a few. That's because it hasn't been printed in forever. What's it worth now? Quarter. Yeah, what was this? Well, we do have a, looks like a mythic coming up. Nico Bolas, the God Pharaoh. Straight out of Amon Kitty Cat. And you are not going to bury Kozilek. I'm sorry, Nico Bolas. Okay, Villainous Wealth. Monty Lux up, Path to Exile, and, oops, a borderless Golgari Rot Farm. I have said it before, and I'll say it again. I really like the borderless um, Bounce Lands. I, I, I love them, actually. I, uh, I really, really enjoy the look, the, the everything. Oh, Shadowborn Apostle Foil. Very nice. Privileged Position. Okay. And Doran, the Siege Tower. So a couple of those, uh, you know, lower tier rares that are not bulk. Of course, I don't think uh, Doran is. It could be at this point. I'm not actually sure at time of this filming. It wasn't. It could be now. I don't know. So I could be wrong. Hey, Inquisition of Cosmic Foil. There we go. Mangler and Anger of the Gods. And Kambal... Crack and Doom, Miss Metal Witch, and the Basilica. All right, so that was a weaker pack. Not every pack can be a home run. Otherwise, these boxes would be $600 each, which I know some people think is going to happen. I don't know. I don't know. There, you know, there's you know, there's another. They didn't release all the supplies, so there's another wave coming. Micaeus the Lunark. And Twin Flame with a Dragon Arch. And hey, Eternal Witness, Borderless. When the Uncommons ooh, are way better than the, than the Rares. 
Domestication. Bitter Blossom. All right. I feel like Bitter Blossom and Kozilek always come together. It's weird. And Legion's Initiative. Um, some people did ask about <clears throat> track printing. This set has 120 rares and 40 mythics. Um, as, as I guess you can say, print sheets go through, it it's too big for singular. It's it's too big for six boxes. So everything will get changed up over time and over over the course of the printing. And and I I personally don't think the set's going to be all that trackable. And that's not a bad thing. Modulthra, the Grave Tide. Wow, we are just we are just cleaning out all the mythics here. You know what? I'm gonna move this big old stack over. There we go. That's better. Okay, so DC, another Inquisition of Kozilek and Mentor of the Meek. That's what I'm finding a lot of, though. Um, <clears throat> obviously, a lot of people are like, "You gotta get the collector boxes, and the draft boxes are only for draft," and blah blah blah. I feel like they spaced the cards out well. And what I mean by that is there so far doesn't seem to be any boxes where you get like eight of all the top mythics. And then you get a box where you get like eight of all the worst mythics. I feel like the sheets were kind of balanced. And again, but based off my earlier comment, that's going to change because of the 40 mythics and blah, blah, blah. So we'll see. But as of right now, I, I feel like these draft boxes are like, they're the most consistent experience I've had since Modern Horizons 1. And what I mean by that, hey, Foil Grand Arbiter. Very nice. And Arjun and Thraxamundar. Hey, Lightning Bolt. Very nice. What I mean by that is, while, while it can happen, and I don't want to say it can't happen, it's extremely rare to go to... Pound Town in these draft boxes. When I mean Pound Town is I mean getting absolutely slaughtered. Not just getting a box that's below value. It's also really hard to get a box that's absolutely insane in these draft boxes. So they're consistent. And there's something to be said for some consistency for when you're when you're cracking. Weather Wayfair and Yeah, sure you can go there. And the Chaos Warp with a summer bloom. That's cool. But yeah, there's something to be said for that. So when some random person is going to drop $300 on a box of cards, and by the way, I think that's what these feel good at, so we'll see what happens to the price points. But when somebody's going to drop that kind of money, hey, force of negation. <laughs> that's what we're... And Dax duplication, duplicate, sorry. Boros Garrison. All right. But yeah, like I was saying, when you're, you know... You're going to actually go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to spend $300 plus tax on a box of cardboard. Or $350 plus tax on a box of cardboard. Wow. Is it Boilerworks and Monster Swift Spear in the foil slots? Ooh, that's cool. Hey, Defining Top. Oh, sweet God. All right. And Judith. Cold Steel Heart. And another Is It Boilerworks. It's kind of nice to know that your odds of uh, just getting absolutely... You know, destroyed like say like a twenty dollar box of Jumpstart, because it happens. I've got enough proof of that. Um, it's very few and far between. That was always the nice part about opening MH1. Honestly, it's why I loved opening MH1 the most, besides the cards that are in there. But the boxes were just so. Even a box that wasn't great, you didn't feel like you just threw away three hundred dollars. Mimeoplasm and Phyrexian Tyranny. But then again, that's also on the sample size, Blood Artist, of buying an entire box, not buying singular packs out of a box, where then you've got great variants, as you just saw with a pack that gave us Phyrexian Tyr Tyranny and a Mimeoplasm. Not, not, that they're, not that they're bad cards, but you know, you know what I mean from a value perspective. You know, sample size matters. Izuri, Claw of Progress for the Disappointing Mythic. Not that we haven't already gotten two fantastic mythics. All right, we got Pull from Tomorrow and Lightning Helix and a Rancor. Oh, man, I love Rancor. Rancor is an all-time favorite of mine. We got Spent Charm, the Leviathan, and the Shattergang Bros. Oh, that's, that's awesome. 
Simic Grill Chamber in the Borderless artwork. Those Borderlesses, this is the time of this video, they're holding on. They're holding on in the, a lot of them anyway. Not all of them. Borderless scares and kind of dropped off. But it took longer than I thought. We got a foil Abbott of Carol Keep, which could become a joke on the channel, but since this isn't my box, I'll put it in the rares. Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> foils. Ha! <clears throat> Go for the throat. City of Brass and Venser. Biogenic Upgrade and Mull Drifter in your uncommons. So what do we got left here? So we got seven packs left. We should have at least one more Mythic, maybe two. Let's see if we can find another strong rare or two. Atla Palani and Wasatora. Fire Mind Vessel. Eternal Witness Foil. Sweet. Colgan's Command. Okay. Hey, Allosaurus Shepherd. All right. Well, there's a, another strong mythic. And Azorius Chancery. Azorius. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Fire Song and Sunspeaker. You know, I have to admit, before this set, I have never seen this card before. Um... It's, it sounds it looks really fun. Am I wrong? Am I mistaken here? I know it's not like worth anything, but from a commander perspective, hey, Conqueror Flail, which is actually holding on better than I would have thought it would. And another Eternal Witness, very good. Oop, oh, good catch. Okay, Creekwood Liege. I think that's still the most valuable of all the Lieges. Thistledown Liege, not the most valuable of all the Lieges. So three packs left. I wonder if we can get an eighth Mythic and maybe one more high-end rare. Teferi's Protection. Yeah, that, that's your one more high-end rare, all right. And we got Mael's Arya, Bloodbraid Elf. Two packs left. Okay, can we get one more Mythic? I feel like we can get one more. Well, we did. We did get one more mythic. Ah. Okay, Damien, congratulations. That is a mana vault in that awesome borderless treatment. And seems to be one of the few cards that after the initial dip is actually climbing up again. And a grave crawler, because, you know, let's just get another solid rare after that. And a Rectos Carnarium. Okay, look at that spread. Sheesh. Okay. Last pack of this box, then we're going to crack open box two. It's going to be a little longer video. Backdraft Hellkite. Uno's Prowler. Because there can't be anything left in that particular box. Because we already got all the fire. All right. So here's what I'm going to do, folks. Give me a second here. Um, God, that mythic, mythic pile is going to get huge, isn't it? I'm just going to take these... Put these, I don't know, over here or something. Okay. I'm just trying to make myself some space. Well, Damien, I think you your box one. I could I can consider that box extremely strong. I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know how the general public feels about it. I know everybody will tell me in comments. Um, so please tell me in comments. But that box feels extremely good. Azuri was your like worst mythic pull. That's But yes, they, they did include cards like, like Azuri in, in Mythic. They did. Because not every Mythic can be $30, or you would never be able to afford these boxes. <clears throat> Everything comes with balance. Okay, box number two, pack number one. Here we go. Chronicle of Heroes and a Culligan's Command Borderless. Just right off the bat. <laughs> Okay, let's just start off the video with a Culligan's Command and then a Mana Vault in the regular treatment. Yeesh. Hope you wanted Mana Vaults. I'm pretty sure you did, actually. All right, well, pack two. Imperial Archangel. 
and Master Bio Bio bah, Biomancer words, Darkness and Basilica. All right, good start to box number two. Anger of the Gods, Invencer. Yep, Battleman did that, and who cares about those? All right, Bad Pack there. You know Vencer. I, I like Vencer. I know he's not worth anything. He's worth squat, but you can, pick, you can pick one up for like 50 cents. Figure of Destiny in Wasatora. Dragon Arch. Hey, Cold Steel. And then Eternal Witness. That's a nice uncommon spread right there. Oops. Well, we got the Arbiter. And Gravecrawler again. And Hellhound, Mentor of the Meek, and Celestia Sanctuary with that gorgeous artwork. Okay, so this box isn't starting as spicy after that Mana Vault. But that's okay. That's okay. we got a lot of packs left to go. Pithing Needle. Ugh. And another Conqueror's Flail. Yeah, you can... You know what? I'm going to... Shift these, put those over here just for my own OCD and Demir Aqueduct. Okay. I'm not OCD, but yeah, you know, that kind of moment can be viewed as such. Doran and Thistledown Liege. You know what? This Doran is not going up, up top. Just because I'm not sure that it, it actually stayed above bulk. I honestly haven't looked. Food chain! Oh, God. So somebody called that out. Um, because there's no borderless food chain, this is like one of the rarest mythics. Just saying. Mariel, uh, I'm sorry, Miles, Arya again. Hey, Path to Exile. By the way, Path to Exiles are now at a very attainable price to buy them all up and fill your decks with all of your commander decks that have white. What are they down to? Like buck fifty each? Oh! <laughs> da ah, Damien! Damien! What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you, what are you? <clears throat> Congratulations! So that is a foil. I know it's hard to tell in my current lighting situation. I get it. Um, I have way too much uh, natural gray light. I know it's white light, but gray light because it's extremely overcast today coming in. Uh, but that is a foil. It's Japanese too, so it's also the matte finish. But mana drain borderless. Oh my god. Okay. So let me get this straight. In this box, so far you got a mana vault, a food chain, and a borderless foil mana drain. Did I make a comment earlier about how, like, you can't kill it in a box? <clears throat> I'm, I'm done. I'm free. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. What? What is? What is this? What is this? Ah, who did you sell your soul? What did you do? What did you do, Damien? That's an Imperial Seal after in the same pack with a borderless foil mana drain. Okay, in a rune of the hidden realms just to take us down a notch. And an Inquisition of Kozlik. Lightning Bolt. If I was Rudy right now, I'd be making the joke of delete the video. But no, no, not gonna make that joke. That's his joke. You know, I just made it, thereby defeating what I just said. Okay, Leviathan and Obnix. Okay, right. So that's that's a comeback to reality pack. Zorius Chancery. What? Seriously? By the way, <clears throat> I just want to call attention that so far in this box, we've done absolutely terribly in the rares. We absolutely killed it in the Mythics. That's interesting, right? Now I've had other boxes that have done not so great in the Mythics and have killed it in the Rares. 
going back to the fact that that helps make these boxes consistent. Ah, the point. It has gone back to the point. Love it when that happens. All right, we got Chaos Warp and Caravec, some Bloom and Flicker Wisp. Not a good pack, but we did have a, a foil Shadowborn Apostle that I think I forgot to say. That's like a dollar fifty common at the time of this filming. Coligan's Command again, and Arjun, the Shifting Flame. Getting some weird duplication here. I guess it shouldn't be too. Two rares per, two rares and/or mythics per pack. City of Brass, all right. Hey, Nim Death Mantle, that's cool. All right, all right. Yep, Mall Drifter. Okay, well, we should still have at least two mythics, but probably three more mythics to go. Anger of the Gods, Borderless, not the Borderless you're looking for, and then Rafik of the Many. But this, I guess, can go up here because it is a neat borderless version. And the artwork is pretty cool. And, and Flicker Wisp. I, I never knew, based off the previous artwork, that it was a giant moth. I know it's an elemental, but, you know. Oh, my God. This is why we can't have nice things, folks. <clears throat> That's why I can't have nice things. Sorry, Damien. Everything, I mean, everything just slid, so it's good, but still. Okay, back on track. Young Pyro. Carrier Thrall. Okay, that is a, uh, that is a mythic. That is uh, Uriel, the Mist Stalker, because, uh, you know, not every mythic can be a $50 plus mythic. And we got Pillar of the Prudes. Actually, I haven't checked that either to see how that's holding on. Hey, Blood Artist, very nice. Oh, man. What a what a little period. Oh, okay. And then a foil Aurelia, the War Leader. So you got two foil mythics. Two foil mythics in your two boxes. That is that's kind of bananas, I have to admit. Hey, Drug Skull Reaver. That's yeah, solid. And, yep, you lashed the Heat Seed for your token uh, Hydra. Seriously, every Master Set has to have a Hydra, and not the one you want it to have. I always forget the name of it. Aether Vial. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet. Joda, at least not in this video, I mean. And the Elf. So what do we got left here? So we got seven packs left. Seven packs left, and we've got... So the foil mythic, regular mythic counts. Actually, that's two foil. We had two foil mythics, actually. So it means we've actually only pulled four regular mythics, which means we are on strong potential for two more mythics in these seven packs. Uh-huh. Okay, Dax Duplicate and Crater Gargadon. Ouch! Oh, God. Rectos Carnarium. Is that an uncommon? Yeah, it's an uncommon. Okay. I don't know what I ended up with that random card there. It must have been... Oh, that is where I'm going to knock stuff over. Never mind. Okay, here we go. Traveler's Amulet. Concordant Crossroads. Another Mythic. Another Mythic. Borderless. What a box. <clears throat> what a freaking box. So, Concordant Crossroads, Borderless, gorgeous. I'm running out of space here for Mythics, it's crazy. And then, Consecrated Sphinx, which, yes, the value on that is down right now, and it's time to pick one up because of this set coming out, that is. Can I get rid of the Ural? <laughs> it just doesn't, can that in your, in uh, Izuri just, like, move? Get out of here, please. Gruel Turf, we uh we move past you two. Mattering. Maybe even you, Muldaltra. Eh, you're really good. I'll, I'll leave you be. I'll admit I don't really know anything about your old uh, Miss Stalker. I've never seen anybody play with it, so it could be great. I don't know. Somebody will probably tell me if it is. Glen Alundra and Taneb the Harvester. Okay. So what do we got? Four packs left? 
Four packs left and maybe maybe one more mythic still. But let's get a big rare hit too while we're at it. This box has been a this particular box has been a little weaker in that category. Jermocus Command. And Splinter Fright. Nope, those are two rares that don't qualify for that big rare hit. I just want to stop and say though, what a spread. Like this is two boxes and you know what? Let's get a smothering tithe. We need a smothering tithe at this point. So foil scion. Thousand year storm. Okay. That yeah, not a huge hit, but that is that is a good pull. And prized amalgam. Ugh, not so much. Alright, Cracklin Doom, Terminate, and Umburial Rites. Two more packs to go. So Damien, thank you for allowing me to crack a couple boxes for you. Much appreciated. I hope you like the stuff that's coming out with you, uh, coming home to you. I know I would be. Mimeoplasm and another Creekwood Leech. You're getting some crazy duplication, though. And Bounty of the Luxa. All right, last pack. Also, thank you, everybody, for watching. I'm going to end it right after this pack. I appreciate it. Obviously, there's a lot of people cracking this content, and much appreciated for choosing this stupid little channel. Warrior's Oath, and that is the first time I have seen this out of anything I've opened. So we did have one more Mythic to go. I actually have no idea if this card's holding on or not. I kind of assumed it was going to go immediately down to a $5 card. I wonder if I'm correct. I do not know. I actually haven't looked. And a Thrumming Stone, which the price on this came down to a, a good reality to get one. Uh, but that's still a good hit. A solid last pack for the road just to finish it off because I just want to stop for one second. And I'm going to do this because even though this video is already at 27 minutes. And I don't know if you I don't know if you qualify. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you qualify. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You know what? You don't even qualify anymore, Shepard. Kozilek, you qualify. Sheesh. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You hear that on every single channel. Uh, but appreciate it.